the, the second that I stop talking is the second that we can all start drinking alcohol. So we'll be there soon. What I want to talk to you about is what I think makes a great Prezi. And I can boil that down to three things, really. It should be easy for your audience to understand. It should be memorable. And it should make your audience want to act in some way or feel something or do something after you've presented to them. I'm going to talk to you about one facet of that today, and that's about layouting. In particular, what I think makes a good Prezi overview. Now, I'm not a graphic designer by any way, but I think I can make a structural Prezi that people can understand. So for me, it's about talking a visual language. And how do we do that in presentations? Well, this is a famous visual perception test. And these two shapes have a name. One of them is called Kiki, and the other one is called Booba. And you have to tell me which one you think is which. Anyone? So who thinks that Kiki is the one on the left? So when I train this, probably about 98% of people say Kiki is the one on the left. So why, why do people say that? Mostly they say it sounds spiky, looks a bit like a K, and it's sharp, whereas Booba is nice and soft and round and a bit bubbly. So as much as there is a language in the spoken word or in the written word, there is on what we put on the screen. And I think to understand that uh, will really help us create better Prezi overviews. So what is a good structure for your Prezi overview? Well, this one is bad. Internally, this is what we would call a sneeze Prezi. So it's exploded out all over the place. And it doesn't really make any sense. As you start to move around, you'll see that that will start to make people feel a little bit seasick. So a sneeze Prezi is not very good unless you want your audience to think that you're chaotic or scatterbrained. But going to the extreme other side of the, 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 the scale here, and having a very rigid, ordered presentation isn't very good in a Prezi either. What you find with this is it's very slide-like, which I will never knock PowerPoint. I think a good PowerPoint is a good presentation, but in general, you don't get much benefit from moving through the slides in this case. And when you zoom out, you tend to lose context. There's no real shape that helps you understand the content. You want to be somewhere in between, and you'll find that a lot in the prezies that our designers make. Here is a, pretty much a brainstorm starting from a blank canvas on a presentation about Romeo and Juliet, turned into a wonderful prezi overview that conveys the tension between the two warring families with the two dueling stags or bucks colliding. Uh, on the other extreme, here's a PowerPoint about children in the inner city urban environments getting access to fresh food. Once again, turned into a far better, more visual Prezi overview where we can see the whole shape of the journey through the presentation. Prezi's that our designers have made in-house, but I think we can all do that. Um, and it's about creating a visual story. Showing the audience your spatial narrative in this whiteboard that is the Prezi canvas. So how do we do that? Well, I do it through a, a very simple process, and it's these four things here. Someone said before you, could, you should only highlight three things. I'm going to screw that up and talk about four things if I've got the time. So the first thing I think is important for your Prezi overview, or your Prezi in general, is position. I'm going to ask you a question. The question is this, what do you see? Do you see five triangles? Do you see one missing in between? Do you see a group of two and a group of three? Anyone? Who sees most people, I think, are saying, who sees, who sees one missing in between? A couple of, who sees two and three? Vast majority. So if you want your audience to understand, most people perceive relationships through position. It's the exact same size, exact same shape, exact same color. Just the positioning of those objects makes us think that those triangles are somehow different from those three triangles. I've had some weird things in there too. Uh, last week, someone said it looked like a Toblerone, if you know what that sweetie is. But, uh, so it's important, uh, if you put things together that are unrelated, you can really confuse the message. And you see it a lot in newspapers. Here we got here. I don't know what's going on with the royal family there, but um, I think there's some issues they have to iron out. But you see it a lot. And my advice in Prezi is to always to cluster sections of content together. If you have intro slides, and I'm just going to call them slides, I'll probably get crucified for that, but that's what I call them. Um, just place them all together. Don't have them all over the place on the canvas. Same with other sections of content. 
Also think about as you move through those clusters of content and you don't want to zoom over things before it's too early. Here, as we move from path point one to path point two, you're actually going to show the content of the last path point, path point four for a millisecond. And I'm a pretty common presenter or audience member in that I have a low attention span, but I'm also quite curious. And if you zoom from one, sorry, if you zoom from one to two, and I see four, I'm not going to listen to a single word that you're saying to me at path point two. So that's a bad positioning. I would move this number four out here and uh, don't cross the lines. If you've seen Ghostbusters, it's the exact same way to do it. Just don't cross the lines. Uh, um, this is the biggest problem of new users that I see on training courses. And it's that idea of bleeding of content. And it's a similar issue in that you zoom, you want to focus on path point two, but you can st still see a little bit of what was before. And even worse, you can see what's coming next at path point three. And again, people just lose focus in your audience. Again, I would move those path point one and two further apart so you can focus or you can actually set your aspect ratio in Prezi. I don't have time to show you that. Maybe if I get a little second at the end, I'll show you that. But you can set an aspect ratio so your frames would fit perfectly on the screen and you literally couldn't have any bleeding. Come over to me at the end, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the next thing that's important about your Prezi overview is size. And the question here is, look at those two objects. Which do you think is most important? Exactly. The big gentleman here says that this is the size here. So I'm five foot eight. So this is difficult in my life. But um, yeah, that's an easy one. In general, people perceive larger things as being more important. So in your Prezi, make important things bigger, less important things smaller. But remember, you've also got some zooming to deal with. So once you start to zoom, I could zoom out a little and all of a sudden the white one's more important and I zoom out a little bit further, then it's all insignificant. So you gotta watch out for your zooming in Prezi and make sure that you keep that perception of size and a hierarchy of size as you go through. Important things bigger, less important things smaller. I think a simple way for me to understand this is to establish a size hierarchy, almost like your bullet points in Prezi. So that top layer, kind of like, Russell talks a lot about three layers of creating a Prezi. I think that's a great way to think about it. I think about that in terms of size. And uh, layer one is your overview. And that should have a meaningful structure. Something like I've tried to achieve. Title is always important. And then just a shape. So we can see here we're kind of advancing from left to right and we're improving as we go along. That second layer, that should show you all the main sections, intro, conclusion, points in between. And they should be visible. So something like this will help your audience see all the points of your Prezi. If you've got related subsections, then it's good to link them graphically. Just use arrows to do that. Simple way to do it if you're not a graphic designer like me. And that final layer, I think it should be zero clutter. You see a lot of Prezi's that have just too much on screen at any one time, and you should use the scaling to just hint at details. And it's really exciting for people to be able to see what might be coming next and just show the context through subsections. So here down in the outro, we can't necessarily see everything, but we can see enough to hint at what's coming next and show the context between each section of content. You might want to drill down and create even more sub-levels of detail. So think about having a size hierarchy as you create your prezies. The third thing that I think is very important for the overview is the flow of your presentation. What I mean by flow, is the general direction that the eye naturally wants to see information or a pattern or an object on a screen. We see flow a lot in uh, ladies' dresses. Uh, we see the, you know, the dress will flow outward from the body. We see it in tattoo designs. We see it a lot in actual graphics and logos. This is a gestalt theory of continuation where the H leads the eye into the maple leaf. And we expect it when we look at slide designs too, or when we read books. In the Western world, we all grew up reading information from left to right, top to bottom. Not everywhere, but that's where we did it. But in Prezi, you can do crazy things. You can spin around like a maniac if you want. So if you are going to break that convention, it's really important to indicate the flow at the overview. You can do that a few ways. You can use characters at each section. You can use numbers. 
But I often find that kind of uses up a lot of the space. So I tend to try and favor arrows as you go through. Just to show the audience where the journey is going to start, where it's going to end, and where you're going to journey in between. The true sense of a, a spatial narrative or a visual journey or a visual story. What I like about the arrow as well is it sets up the eye for the camera movement. So it's one extra thing you can do to reduce that shock or possibility of seasickness as the, the eye moves. It's prepared for that movement. What I like to think about it, actually, I've, I'm going to plug my speakers in quickly. I don't think I've got them on here. But a good spatial narrative always reminds me of the Indiana Jones movies. And I'm perhaps showing my age a little bit when I show you this. But who remembers the Indiana Jones movies? Excellent. So do you remember these scenes in Indiana Jones? Where they'll have the map and they'll move between like the hero's journey. So Harrison Ford's on a plane. He's going from one place to the next. And you always get these little movie scenes, and it's such a great visual narrative, a great sense of flow. Not get my sound. Oh, it's so much better with sound. Here we go. Yes. Now, to me, that's pretty exciting. I really do love Indiana Jones. But if you think about it, your overview at Prezi can be that exciting if you put a good strong flow into it and show the audience where the journey starts, where it ends, where they're going to go in between, then hopefully they'll be excited about going along that journey with you. And I think it must be more exciting than your agenda slide in a PowerPoint. We've all seen them, it's on slide one or slide two. It'll be what's happening today, what you're going to cover in your presentation. The agenda slide is your Prezi overview, just a more visual way to represent that. So rather than have your bullet list, you want it to be an exciting journey. Here, again, I'm not a graphic designer. This is just a Prezi template. And we can see how all the parts relate to each other. We get excited about the little bits of content that we can see in between, and we can see the context, and hopefully get a bit excited about going along that journey. This is a, a bit too much flow. This is an, an actual slide used by the US military to convey the problems in the war in Afghanistan. And I think it shows you what goes wrong when you get an overview completely wrong. Zoom out, there's arrows going everywhere. There's too much density of content. And it does look like the guy doesn't have a clue what's going on in the war. The, the comment in the New York Times the next day by General Stanley McChrystal, who was high up in the military at the time, but then had an affair, the usual. Um, got fired, um, said that when we understand that slide, we'll have won the war. So, a bit of a PR disaster as well. So, the final piece of the puzzle for me is get in your position, get in your size, get in your flow, but then focus on that overview. And what we call it at Prezi is making the overview squintable. It sounds a bit silly, but a squintable overview or an overview that passes the squint test is one that you can stand way back, way back at the far end of the room, squint a little bit, maybe you've been out the night before, like me, and you can still see the overarching meaning or feeling or theme of the presentation, the topic of the presentation from the get-go, from the structure itself. So to make this squintable Prezi, it's a good idea to zoom out at the end and think, what is it that I can add to this to help my audience understand? People do it in three ways that I see. The first one is to use a metaphor. I think a metaphor works well when you've got an abstract concept like shedding light on a situation or overcoming a problem. Something quite abstract and you want to explain it with using something quite concrete, a visual that everyone understands. And it works well in Prezi when you have a singular overarching metaphor or theme or concept. It doesn't always work, but when it does work, you can get great Prezi overviews. The templates are a great example of this. Structural metaphors here, turn the situation around. We're kind of falling down and the ball bounces back up again, things getting better. Improvement or reaching a goal, or that sense of progress is again, Prezi templates, walking up the steps, going up the bar chart to succeed, reach your goal. People use pictorial metaphors, pretty abstract concepts here. We've got tension, we've got the Newton's cradle balls clashing together or the stags that we saw earlier 
in one of our Prezi Design Prezis. Known unknowns, this is one of my favorite ones. It's uh, show underlying issues underneath. People in Prezi love this one because you can start here and you can say, this is what I think the problems are. And then with a bit of zooming, you can zoom out and uh-oh, that's what the problems actually are. It tends to really connect with the audience, that one. So simple metaphors, growth here. We have the foundations, the drivers watering the roots or the core, and the results of the branches on the tree. Simple pictorial metaphors to help your audience understand quite abstract concepts. And a great place to find these is in the Prezi template chooser. The team at Prezi do a great job, I think, of making really, really good metaphorical Prezi overviews. Some people realize that you can't always use a metaphor. It's not always going to work out that way. You can't you know, use a single overarching metaphor for a project update in a lot of cases. Um, so sometimes people just use a diagram. You see this a lot more in the academic world. It helps you to visualize something more clearly. And what's great for relationships or processes or things that aren't necessarily linear. I've got one more minute, so I'll go quickly. So we've got central topics. We can see here that the subparts are linked graphically. Here's an actual user presentation about the federal budget. Things in and out of harmony. It's a great presentation from one of my colleagues here. Funnels, everyone loves a good process funnel. Sales presentations, these are actual presentations from users I found on Prezi.com Explore. Not doctored by me in any way. Cyclical processes. Excellent. Here, uh, we saw some examples of this before. Not a lot of information is linear. A lot of information about divergences, convergences. You wouldn't draw in a bullet list. Here we've got like a decision point. And a great starting point for that is the diagrams in Prezi. And if I can squeeze another minute out of this, a lot of people use background pictures. To, these are the most popular way to make your overview squintable. We've got some great ways to visualize a topic. Sometimes it's all you need. We know, look at that, you know exactly what it's about. It's about music, jazz players throughout history. Look at that, you know it's about tornadoes. Simple stuff. Just a nice background picture. These are some of our own experts that made fantastic presentations, brilliant overviews from beautiful non-linear spaces to explore from our Russell, uh, our UK-based expert, to uh, a Dutch aviation school presentation. There's not a single bracket frame or circle frame in this presentation. It feels like a long take in a, in a movie as you flow through. You really feel immersed in the subject. And an award-winning presentation from Hedwig here uh, about identity. There we go. And it's a, I think, for me, the one that I love about this, the reason I love this is the feeling that it gives across as you move through. You get a hint of that 3D background of barbed wire. It's heavy kind of subject matter, and it makes you feel something quite strongly. For images, is, again, we've recently updated this, uh, the, the, the insert image function in Prezi's great. You can search through Google Images um, and find really good content. There's actually a little button here. So you can uh, show only images licensed for commercial use, which means it's uh, Google's fault if someone tries to sue you, which is always good. Uh, and I think we'll leave it there, guys. So I don't have time to show you more examples. I would love to talk to you about this all day. Um, but if you can get those things right, I think you will make a fantastic Prezi overview. Get your positioning right. Cluster related things together. Don't zoom over things before you don't want to show them. And don't have bleeding of content. Get your size right, make important things bigger, less important things smaller. Keep that in mind as you zoom in and out. Indicate the flow from your overview, show the audience where it starts, where it ends, where you're going to journey in between. And zoom out, think about is there a metaphor, is there a diagram, is there a background picture that I can just top off this presentation to help my audience understand it from the get-go. And if you do that, you'll create a great Prezi overview. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for your great talk.